hell is this? What's going on here? Okay, watch it, watch it! Shit! It's a hot summer afternoon and the skyline is changing. Crews are building a brand new baseball stadium, one of the most ambitious projects the city has ever seen. At the heart of it all stands a colossal crane stretching hundreds of feet into the air. Today it's lifting a piece of the roof that weighs over 400 tonnes. Everything seems routine, but within minutes the unthinkable will happen. In an instant, the entire site is thrown into chaos. The 14th of July 1999, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, USA. In America, especially in the Midwest, baseball is a beloved national pastime, drawing families, friend groups and fans spanning every generation to stadiums every season. Plans are underway to build a state-of-the-art retractable roof stadium that would become the new home for the Milwaukee Brewers baseball team. This ambitious project will be a marvel of modern engineering. Once completed, it will feature a massive movable roof designed to shelter fans from the weather, but on sunny days can be opened. To make this dream a reality, construction companies have had to assemble some of the largest steel components ever used in a stadium. To move them into place, they need a crane like no other. Enter the Lampson LTL 1500 Transit Lift, affectionately known as Big Blue, one of the largest, most powerful cranes in the world at the time. This massive heavy lift crawler crane is capable of lifting loads up to 1200 US tons and towers nearly 567 feet high with a boom length stretching over 400 feet, a goliath piece of machinery designed for the most heavy duty projects. Today it will be lifting the enormous roof sections, weighing around 450 tons each into place with precision. The company in charge of the construction is Mitsubishi Heavy Industries. Construction has been progressing steadily, with crews preparing to lift one of the final sections of the roof. To help monitor and guide the placement of the roof section, three iron workers are in a man lift located nearby, positioned for close observation. Concerns from some of the workers over the conditions have been voiced, but overruled by their managers. The crane is rated to operate in winds up to 20 miles per hour, but some gusts have measured as high as 27 miles per hour, although this speed is not prolonged, so the job is given the okay to proceed. As Big Blue hoists the massive section of the stadium's roof, a safety inspector happens to be filming it on his camera. A series of loud noises are heard, consisting of metal groaning under the stress, soon followed by the terrifying sight of the crane toppling onto the stadium and then the ground in a matter of seconds, ending up in a pile of twisted metal. Tragically, on its way down, the crane collides with the man lift. Three ironworkers inside the bucket lose their lives. The primary cause of the collapse would be found to be excessive lateral wind loads acting on the crane's massive boom. Although the load was within the crane's lifting capabilities, they neglected to factor in the effect the wind would have on the load itself. Such a large piece of the stadium roof essentially acted like a sail, catching the wind and exerting additional stress on the crane's kingpin, the critical rotating joint which connects the key structural parts. Big Blue was designed to operate safely in wind speeds up to 20 miles per hour. Anything above that threshold was considered unsafe. On the day of the collapse, wind speeds were recorded at over 21 miles per hour, with gusts reaching up to 27 miles per hour, well above safe limits for the type of lift being performed. With the specific load it was hoisting, the safe wind speeds should have been no more than 11 miles per hour. Several workers on site that day had voiced concerns about the wind, fearing it might destabilise the crane or even knock them from the elevated platforms where they were working. 
After the collapse, investigators discovered a broken water main just 20 feet from the crane's base. The leaking water softened the soil between the crane, causing it to sink approximately one foot into the ground during the heavy lift. This sudden shift in stability would have created an uneven load distribution across the crane's structure, placing additional stress on the boom. Though not the primary cause, this ground instability was identified as a contributing factor in the collapse. The tragedy claimed the lives of three workers, injured five others, led to over 500,000 in federal fines, and resulted in a lawsuit settlement exceeding $99 million. It also delayed the opening of Miller Park by nearly a year, adding an estimated $50 million to the project's total cost. Beyond the immediate damage, the incident exposed serious flaws in construction safety protocols, particularly in how large crane operators are managed. In the aftermath, the industry was forced to re-examine its standards, leading to several key lessons. Crane operators must be given the authority to stop a lift if they believe conditions are unsafe, regardless of deadlines or outside pressure. Every crane operation should be carefully planned and supervised by experienced professionals who follow the manufacturer's specifications and all applicable safety codes. Routine crane inspections and maintenance must be performed thoroughly, with any damage or wear reported and repaired before work continues. Load calculations must also take into account not just weight, but environmental forces like wind, especially at the height of the boom where conditions can be drastically different from the ground. Operators and workers involved in crane activity should receive proper training and certification in crane safety and operation, and should always wear appropriate protective equipment. Finally, clear and consistent communication between contractors, subcontractors, and site supervisors is essential. Disagreements or concerns must be addressed immediately and professionally to prevent small issues from escalating into dangerous situations. A memorial honouring the three ironworkers, Geoffrey Wisher, William DeGrave and Jerome Starr, who lost their lives in the crane collapse, is located just outside the stadium, serving as a quiet place of remembrance for the lives lost during the construction of the ballpark. In 2021, Miller Park would be officially renamed to American Family Field, following the expiration of 20-year naming rights agreement with Miller Brewing Company at the end of the 2020 season. But despite the official change, many fans continue to refer to the stadium by its original name, Miller Park, reflecting its deep-rooted association with the team and the city for over two decades. The Big Blue Collapse wasn't caused by a single error, it was the result of multiple overlooked risks and misjudgments. Today, it reminds us that even the most powerful machines are vulnerable to the effects of Mother Nature, and that every precaution must be taken to protect the lives of those who build the structures we often take for granted. If you enjoyed this mini documentary, give the video a like for the time and effort it took me to make, and consider subscribing so you can catch future episodes as I upload them. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you again next time.